Welcome, everyone. Uh, welcome to the Mind Takeaway podcast. Today, we've got our guest, is Simona. So welcome. Yeah, hi. Hello to everyone. Hello to both of you. Thanks a lot for having me. <laughs> hi, Simona. S Simona, uh, we, we invited you to talk today uh, about something that it's, it's, seems to be a pressing issue, and, and it is about how to how to build our our careers how to go about careers isn't it peter yeah and so many correct me if i'm wrong you are a career specialist anyway right so you're the right person to speak to yeah. if people want to you know get somewhere you know if they're a bit stuck with their career or you know what we were saying before we recorded that you know you can become a bit of a pessimist and think you know how come i'm passed over for all of these jobs and why can't i not change careers and do all of this and we can get a bit stuck in instantly right and no surprise right now with covid you know mm -hmm. there's a lot of negativity just by switching on the news for 10 minutes it can mm -hmm. blend your head right um yeah what's your take on it yeah, yeah, that, that's right. You're sure or you're right. And it's really, it's interesting. I've been working in that field of career development and helping people really to land their dream jobs for over five years. And uh, why I'm doing that? Because I spent that 20 years of my career in corporate world, really being a business leader and having some great business results. But then I noticed that I can translate that knowledge and experience into consulting and coaching, help people how they can really build careers that they really love love not only having a job and you are absolutely right with the COVID and everything what's going on what I'm noticing in, is that clients are coming to me with the question you know I have a great job but I don't fully enjoy it mm -hmm. that's one way and the other one is you know it became so stressful I would really like to think about what's next for me is this really what I would like to stay with or if I would like to change it and all those are challenges which, which are completely normal and they vary period by period, how the life changes, how the econom economy changes, how, how we do and develop. And that's my field of expertise. I love to say that my zone of genius is really in the field that I had those uh, experienced professionals and leaders who really would like to translate their great jobs into their dream careers. And that's what I do. Yeah. <laughs> it's really interesting. And, and, and uh, how you say it's, it's, it's not just a career. It's not just, you know, I would like a different career, but it's something that I really dream of, something that I would really like to. And I think uh, in the past, people were more doing jobs and just more doing mm -hmm. what made sense for a career progression or what they should be doing. Uh, but I don't know, maybe it's just me, or is, it, is that something that you see that, that people... Uh, that's not enough it's more about where i really would like to go in which direction i would like to go you know you are not the, the lonely one there are a lot of people like you and it's really like that it's amazing that if i talk to professionals or people or employees who are really successful and you if you look at them from the outside you have that feeling they have everything yeah that's it that's it i would like uh, love to have the career which they have as well but you know the interesting thing is that usually what we do we can enjoy it sometimes it's really be passionate about something and i'm careful with that because being passionate about something can also lead us into burnout but on the other hand i love to talk with my clients and with people who are like considering the change or thinking about i just would like to discover what's going on with my career or with myself that they think about four areas which are crucial for our life but as well for our career and those are what you really love to do that's passion and combined with what i'm good at and what can i be paid for and then what's really needed out there in the world and if you combine those four things then you come to that so-called dream career or career what you really truly truly love where, where you are good at what you're doing and where you really see the opportunity to grow. So it's not always about thinking what I currently am good at and that's why I enjoy. I always uh, try to, um, for my clients and for, so for myself, to think about what's next. What can be the growth opportunity? What's that long-term aspiration? Because also our day-to-day -day motivation changes, which, which is normal because our priorities do change. But having that 
uh, plan for ourselves because it's our career. So we are so great at delivering results for our companies and others and taking care of others and really motivating others. But what about us? Mm -hmm. if it's about us and how we really uh, plan it, how much energy and efforts we put behind it and really to think about not only being passionate about something, but also combining that with what I can be really well paid for it and how this really relates and how this can be helpful for the world outside is really needed. And then you land a career which really is a so-called dream career or amazing career, what you really are enjoying on a long term then. Hmm. Yeah. yeah, I like the way you said that because just finding that sweet spot that's the one thing that's going to carry you forward, right? Because there's nothing worse. We've all got to that in the past where we've agreed to a particular role or we're in a position and it gets a bit stagnated, right? And we think yeah. that we have to do one thing or the other. And what I heard as well, which was really cool, is it sounded like you can change your mind, right? So one day you get up and you're like, yeah, this is a buzz. But, you know, you don't know six months, a year, two years down the line. That could be something that's like, yeah, you know, that's not it. It doesn't have to be a problem, right? You can just then um, change your mind and start to explore, as you say, what I'm already good at. But for me, what sounded like the most important part is what are my passions? You know, what really lights me up? Because surely if you're going to go into a dream job, it has to be something that you get a, a bus out of, right? Yeah, 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 absolutely, absolutely. You know, we shouldn't be f mm, afraid of a change or a progress because that's that's that drive which really keeps us going and i'm always uh, explaining or trying to explain to everybody you know if it is if you change your mind that's good because you have the self awareness and that's the beauty if we have the self awareness we can manage and create and grow and help others as well it's not only about us of course and that's the beauty of it and having the awareness that something is not completely right that we would really like to change something that's the most powerful thing which we can really which can happen to us and i always support that do that because you know if you're stagnating and we have most probably all been there already having that golden cage of a great job very well paid job but not a career which we would really be proud of which we would enjoy fully and that's the difference and being aware of that and uh having the will the desire the energy taking time to change something that's the most powerful thing which i fully support and i'm i'm explaining sometimes that to my clients as well and people around my friends as well you know that's the beauty of it now you know that you would like to change something what better can appear than that <laughs> or what better can happen yeah and what would you say if someone said oh that sounds great but in reality I'm kind of stuck and I, I, I don't know what that first step is. What would you say, what would make sense to say to them? You know, what, what, would, be, what would be that first thing on their journey that would be the most impactful that they could do if they were thinking, right, that sounds great. I want a piece of that, but I don't think that's for me. Mm -hmm. You know, if you don't think it's for you, then you're not ready. You don't want to be a leader of your life. That's very simple for me. <laughs> if you come to me and say, you know, it sounds interesting, but I think I'm not ready. Okay, mm, would you like to be ready? What is the next thing you would like to do? What's your long-term aspiration? What I usually start with, it's really that, as we said, you know, short-term things or weekly, yearly, that changes. But if you have that long-term aspiration and that vision of you, where you would like to be, what you would like to be, who you would like to become, who are people around you, who would like you enjoy their company. So that's really important. And usually we start with that. What's the long-term aspiration? And then translate that into the uh, concrete short-term action. Why? Because, you know, if we only work on the action plan, then there is no energy and no... Uh, inspiration behind it and that's needed if you want to do the daily job let's say daily work 24 24 7 or repeating some tasks as well you have to have carry that long-term goal in it why you are doing it today because tomorrow you will achieve that and after tomorrow it will bring you that and in 10 years you will land there so for me that's really that's really key but to be very practical what we usually start with is the uh, of course, the resume, 
and their profile on LinkedIn, how do we look like, and then the research. Research is so important because it's part of the preparation phase. And if you don't do your work and job preparing and planning, then you will not land somewhere where really would be the most enjoyable place for you. Mm. And I can explain that research and that thing as well into details, but usually that's the thing. Mm. Yes. What do you carry with you? What are your experiences? What would you like to do with that? And what's then the long-term desire? Mm. What to add, where to grow, where to develop to come to that long-term asp career aspirational goal? It's interesting. Yeah, it kind of, when you connect those dots, picture becomes more visible that... Mm call it authentic desire uh, that and uh, who would you like to be uh, becomes more visible um, but I was just thinking about something what do you think I mean I, I assume that we all have some dreams and yeah. some, of them, some of those dreams are probably looking too impossible for us so that we don't even dare going there mm -hmm. what do you think what stops people from taking the step Mm -hmm. What makes them not ready? Is mm -hmm. there anything that, that you've noticed in the pattern? The most crucial thing is not having this, uh, the awareness. Mm -hmm. Awareness either of their capabilities, skills, results, achievements, or not awareness of the limiting beliefs which okay. they carry. Usually it starts there because it's about us. And then the answer to that usually is what's stopping us is that all, also small little baby steps can lead somewhere or they will lead you somewhere. And that's the answer then. You know, you don't have to do everything at once because sometimes it's not possible. Sometimes we are not equipped. Sometimes we are missing help or it's not time. There is a personal, private situation, family situation, which is not, uh, which is stopping us or which is not uh, making it uh, possible at the moment. But you know, step by step, you will come somewhere if you will really have that uh, self-awareness of all the positives, everything what we bring with us and everything what is really limiting us in that. Yeah, yeah it's, 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 it's interesting. Yeah, it's, it's the awareness of, uh, um, of what we have, what we are capable of. And, uh... and you know, it's so interesting. It, it, that stands for every single level, whatever level you have in your company or in the career, it doesn't matter. Because at the beginning, you have to be aware that you can't be a IT guy if you don't do the basic uh, education on how to programming things, for example. Mm. If you go higher, then of course, you have to work on your leadership skills if you would like to be the full stack programmer, for example, <laughs> because we are in that digital world currently and it's so popular and so uh, required in the market. But as you grow and if you would like to lead your own uh, company or become a CEO of an IT, com uh, IT or technology company, of course, you have to work not only on your expert skills, but as well your leadership, your business uh, knowledge and so on. So yeah, and every single lever, it's about the awareness. Yeah, and, and I like to set up, um, sorry, go on. And then, of course, as we do that career coaching, so you just adjust the terminology and how we lead through the conversation. It's just adjusted to the level of uh, individual uh, challenge. And that's it, yeah. yeah. And I like the fact that you talked about small steps. Yeah. We all do this, right? I know I do. If I take on too much, you know, bite up a big chunk of work, mm -hmm. it'd be overwhelming. And it's easy to give up because it seems such a big thing, such mm -hmm. thing the take. But once you break it down into small bits, and yeah, it's a good reminder what you said there because it's possible it, suddenly. Yeah. yeah, it suddenly becomes possible because it's small, doable chunks. And we say this to clients all the time: you can have that for sure. But yeah. rather than jump straight in, and there's nothing wrong with jumping straight in and getting excited about it, mm. but break it down into sizable amounts. And then when things get tough you can step back and go, okay, well, I've still hit the milestones. I've had a rough week, a rough month, but I'm still making headway. Whereas if you try and tackle the whole thing at once, it becomes so debilitating. And I know that was for me in the past. It was like, I can't get there because I was trying to leap over this massive space, you know, mm -hmm. taking the steps that would have got me closer daily, weekly, monthly, yearly, et cetera. Yeah. Absolutely. You know, it can be so overwhelming, especially if you're trying to do everything at once and alone. And that's why it's so important to ask for help 
colleagues, family, mentors in your mm, business or in your industry, finding a coach, really help really comes as a big, big, not only motivator, but as well enabler of something what we can achieve. And that's why I'm really, I'm so passionate about having a mentor or having a coach because I've done it for myself, really, truly, honestly, I constantly hire coaches and I work with somebody because it makes uh, me really to do, to do things faster, mm -hmm. uh, even better than I would do it on my own and not to have that feeling of really being overwhelmed with everything because then you have somebody who is neutral uh, and somebody who really independently can challenge you, can offer you a support, but it's well somebody who opens the doors which you might not see that all in the day, like in the day exist. So that's a powerful thing as well. Yeah, we don't have to do everything on our own. <laughs> so. That's a, that's a great analogy. It so opens the doors that you haven't seen before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think it's great to have mentors and coaches. I know we do. We've talked about this before we recorded as well. And <laughs> you know, because you know, say for us, we're in the business of helping people, right? But also, we need help sometimes ourselves. And we're, for example, doing some research in a moment. And it wasn't until we we were getting stuck. And then as soon as we started to reach out to people that we think you know might be able to help us, guess what happened? You know, exactly. we got more clarity, we got further forward. Mm -hmm. And going back to this in incremental steps things, we get we got further forward to what mm -hmm. we really wanted. Mm -hmm. and, and it's great, it's a great sanity check, isn't it? Just to go outside of your own bubble, your own reality sometimes, because yeah. you mm -hmm. don't understand what's possible. And it's totally fine. It's an innocent thing. I know I get stuck with it all the time, right? But as soon as you start bouncing ideas off someone else, coach, mentor, as you said, I remember as soon as I made it clear to people outside of my own head that I wanted something, it becomes more real, right? You get closer. You even start to believe for yourself that that actually might be possible, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you know, sometimes we miss that, that self-belief and we don't, you know, that uh, uh, drive that we constantly are on the wheel that we can self-motivate that, sorry, that does not exist, let's be honest. And you made one very good point, Peter. You said that, you, you know, sometimes you just start, have to start from scratch, from the basics. And that's a very good point because we are so afraid, even with careers or businesses, it doesn't matter, or our personal development or private life. Sometimes you just have to really leave every, delete everything in the sense of just, I'll keep my mind open now. Where should I start? Because maybe things do, don't work. And you have to change them. And that's so, that, don't be afraid of that. And it, it, the career is the same. Sometimes you just start from scratch. What better thing to happen than to have three or four or five businesses in our life or three or five or six careers, which means that we can really, we have, we have so much opportunity and because we don't have one talent only, or we don't have a potential only in one field and that's nothing wrong. And really to do the basics or to do that really ground check, it's really great to do it yeah yeah and I, that's but it's also really scary i mean i remember <laughs> leaving a career in, in in uae and coming to uh germany i wanted to do it it was it was my wish and i wanted to but that that shook so many of my you know ideas of who i am and it means starting from very beginning uh losing yourself like th there's so much stuff that you know if i never did i would never have grown as much as i did over the period of time a and i actually gave th that's one of the stories that i like to share if i didn't embark on the change if I, in my career mm -hmm. if, I, if i didn't start to to the business uh, I wouldn't never have grown and learned so much about myself as I did yeah. during that period of time. It's, it really forces you to challenge everything you thought is mm. possible for you and turn it around and see yourself in a much, much uh, uh, capable light, if that makes sense. No, I believe there is this expression of do your housekeeping. And then, uh, and then build on that. <laughs> but that's exactly that. And then some, 
suddenly everything is so clean and so simple and so we, we have that drive again or the inspiration oh yeah exactly how did i forget about it this is really what i love or yeah i can start that or i i'm capable to do that or i would like to do that and all those things yes absolutely agree so you know, you know what's just reminding me about this conversation and thank you I've really enjoyed it just how those possibilities grow when you're willing to become vulnerable and just go with it. And yeah, I mean, as Mira said, it's, yeah, it's, it's really a lot of fear, anxiety, and it's a good, it, it's excitement as well, because you're like, well, I don't know if I can do it, but I'm going to have a go. But just mm -hmm. accepting that challenge. Yes, you don't know what's going to happen. But even if you don't get to this, you know, exactly what you want, even mm -hmm. if you're halfway, you're still getting further along the line, right? And I'm just thinking about this current situation, you know, COVID, everyone's saying the world's more of an uncertain place, but I don't buy that, right? I know that you probably don't see this about it. <laughs> Uncertainty is the norm. Change is always going to happen, right? So by accepting that you're going to take some steps and change your career, mm -hmm. not just preparing for opportunities, and aren't you then really getting ahead of uncertainty anyway, because no one can predict what's going to be around the corner, right? And why would you even try? I know for me, when I try and do that, I'm rubbish. <laughs> I just yeah, absolutely, absolutely. You know, there sometimes I really sound like a tough coach or a tough person, but I have a very clear uh, question here. Would you like to nurture your pessimism and your fears, or would you like to nurture the opportunities? That's decide. And then if you can't decide, of course, there are different ways how we can help you or how a person can decide, but it's really about their nurture the opportunities or nurture our fears. And of course, if you decide to go and be positive and nurture the opportunities, then of course, what's important as well that you have to deliver something on that because otherwise you are empty and then the fears do jump in again. So that's important as well. But yeah, my answer usually it's, it's on us, you know, we decide how we would like to lead our life and who we would like to be either in career as, as people, as uh, as poses or as you know, parents, it doesn't matter, but it's, it's on us. You can listen to the world and constantly listen to all those news and really, really growing all that fears or negativity, but there is other way to do it as well. Though, I'm not a person who would say, you know, yeah, let's be optimistic because there is nothing out there. Absolutely not. But be realistic and then put some uh, peppers of positivism on it. And then you can start with that. Mm. And that's usually my formula how to do it. Good one. Mm. Yeah, and I think <laughs> just look, look at it. I'm just, I'm just laughing because the more we talk about this, the more I'm even coaching myself in my own head because it's like, you know, if you watch the news and you look at what's going on currently right now, it just debilitates everyone, the best of people, right? Mm -hmm. But how do we not know there's going to be new industries come out of all of this turmoil and uncertainty? Because let's be honest, there will be. I've already seen Absolutely. new opportunities, new jobs. Mm -hmm. Now, many other industries where COVID's actually supercharged their careers, you know, people, mm -hmm. have, companies have grown through it. And I know there are people that have suffered and there are real job losses. But that's it. it's just being curious about, well, okay, this has happened, but mm -hmm. what's around the corner? What could I, what makes sense to me? And, and going back to what you said about what I'm passionate about, where, where is my experience, my life experience been? Mm -hmm. Where could I add value? And, you know, what would I like to do next? I'm pretty sure that what will come out of that mix through that exploration will be something magic. And even yeah. if you don't land that gene, uh, the dream job straight away, you'll probably come up with massive surprises. I know we did because, you know, there's certain things that we never got to, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Disappointed. And I, I wanted to ask you, what's your take on that? So when people have got, you know, gone through these incremental steps, but they end up failing mm -hmm. and then they kind of sit on their hands and maybe give up. What's your take on failure? You know, when, you, when you're pursuing this dream career, what would you say to people who've got mm -hmm. just on that path, but suddenly yeah. they've just, fell off it fell off the rails a little bit i know it's so interesting that failure really for me the best like let's say it inspirational sentence is that you never lose you either win or you learn and if you have that attitude sometimes it's only a sentence who is shared with us 
and we immediately start to see the opportunity maybe. But you know, failures are something we can really learn from. For me, failure is a uh, de uh, development opportunity or a development tool as coaching is. But I understand it like that. And what I like to share with others is really, let's see what's in it there for you. What did you learn? If you're really broke and down and completely demotivated, What's the one thing which you remember is positive still in that situation? And, you know, for us coaches, but you know that approach most probably, the, the thing where people are really negative, where, where they really exhausted all the possibilities, the options which they have, and they only think about it, I'll never win again, I'll never do it again, I'll never succeed. I tried 100 things already and that's it. Or COVID really forced me to uh, really not be able to do anything or I don't have the desire. The crucial thing is really to change their mind and to switch to the what what what's the one thing what's positive in that or what imagine that everything would be great how would it look like and for me it's really about uh, what we the power of us coaches really is that we uh, ask questions people that they will never forget and that they will really re remember for the rest of their life because they changed or trans yeah transformed they're thinking about the situation and for us you know even though if you failed of course take time uh, do some uh, either crying or uh, self-pitying yourself for a day or for a two but then start thinking about what you can change in that and for me that action approach not leaving ourselves too long in a certain either uh, a, a place where you are like you really feel Mm, the commodity place, let's call it like that. Is it the right expression? Uh, either really that negative one or a too highly um, hype positive one. It's never too good because then something is happening which either is leaving you in that space of uh, just feeling good in the situation, how it is. And you don't really provide or you don't really give yourself the opportunity to change something or to grow. Mm -hmm. And that's that's the best uh, answer which I can really give mm -hmm. in such situations, really. But if good things, bad things, COVID, no COVID, um, economic crisis, it happens. We know it's a cycle. It's a 10-year cycle, 12-year cycle, 7-year cycle. So it will always be there. It's really on us how you see it. You know that now they are circling all those, um, I believe it's on LinkedIn, on Instagram, you can find it everywhere, how a person who was born in uh, uh, 1910, for example, what they survived and what how their life looked like and, uh, looked like. and now we are complaining living in a times of COVID or a crisis, in economic crisis in 2008. So that's everything has to do with the point of view, I believe. Yeah, and, and it's a good mm. point that, you know, we've never had it better in so many ways. Mm. Like, there's things that we need to resolve as a species like climate change very quickly. But that aside, we've literally never had better opportunities. Yeah. And, and I guess the main thing, you just stop watching the news, right? And, and as, as, you, as we've all, you know, alluded to and talked mm. about in this conversation, just be curious about the many possibilities should you want to do that? Because I think you framed it really well that, you know, you have to want to help yourself first. You know, if mm -hmm. you have not yet, that's completely fine as well. And like you said, if you have a bad day, there's nothing wrong with grieving about it, having a cry, because I know I do. You know, but then don't wallow in that self-pity because at some point you have to come out of that because, it, you know, it's never going to help anyone being in that state for too long, right? But once you've, once the clouds have lifted and there's a bit of sunshine, it's like, <laughs> what's the possibilities now? What, what can we do? Yeah. You know, yeah. Can I reach out to, you know, do we need a coach? Do we need to just share my ideas on mm -hmm. my, some of the things that are bubbling around my head with my family or close ones or people you trust? And then just from getting it out of your head and connecting to other humans, mm -hmm. it's a different place, right? You just feel so much better by just going through that simple process. Absolutely. And internalizing it and not sharing that, it's just, mm -hmm. I can easily self-sabotage myself so easily. But as soon as I share that with the outside world, already, yeah, metaphorically, a weight feels lifted off my shoulders, right? Mm -hmm. You know, we so often forget that success or feeling good or really having that feeling, aha, uh -huh, now I'm in a place which really I feel good. It's about hard work as well. It doesn't come as easy as we might think it does. 
okay, sometimes you're lucky and some things really happen quickly because you put some planning before in it already. But I really, I am a person who always says, you know, you have to really uh, set the dreams and think about it and set a long-term plan, but then really be aware of it that the rest is logistics and the hard work. So set a date for your dreams, but then really work hard for it because that, that's the only formula which works. And I'm, I mentioned that because uh, we are talking about that 2020, which is really, or it was an awful year. But anyway, you know, it's really, there are so many with that online, what I wanted to mention with that online and all the opportunities which COVID brought with really expansion of uh, digital and online services, online offers. What, what I'm noticing is that people really are sending out the message everything is possible very quickly. You can be a millionaire with the online business in half a year or three months or one year. Sorry, my dear, it's not like that, mm -hmm. really. Be because it requires efforts, it requires uh, you know, building, if not other, building the brand, building your image, uh, building your trust among people, which are their online, face-to-face, -face, doesn't matter, it's the same. So it's don't, let's don't take it that it's so easy because then we might be disappointed. And mm -hmm. that's that result of the COVID that people are disappointed or that they feel that they failed. Success does not come through night. You have to work for it really. And uh, what, whatever we saw in the past, all those stories or businesses which were really successful at once, they also failed very, very quickly. Or the people who were either the CEOs or who built that businesses lost their grounds in the sense of that quick success. So if you really think about mentioning once again, that long-term uh, desire or what we really like to leave as our legacy at the end of the day, it doesn't matter. We don't have to have the global impact, but for our families, for ourselves, for our children, what would we really like for our legacy to be? And then work on that. Mm. And I believe it's really important. And let's be real. That's part of me being realistic as well. <laughs> I'm glad you are realistic. I value that because it's that honesty and that authenticity yeah. that will really impact the people around you and especially mm -hmm. your clients, right? Mm -hmm. and yeah, going back to what you're saying, I mean, it's not that we're saying it's hard, right? It's just that hard work when you're passionate about something. For me, I get a buzz out of it. Um, and I know it sounds cheesy, but yeah. All of these conversations keep reminding me it's about the journey. <laughs> it is. It is. Let's be honest. Once I get right. what I want, I'm just like, okay, I'm done with that. It never feels that great. It doesn't matter how good it is, right? What is it all that about, you know? And, and I speak to many people who've, you know, achieved great things in sport or, you know, through music and that. And once they get what they want, they're like, ah, oh, that's not it. And they always <laughs> say, actually, the build up to it and the journey, even though I didn't really see it as so important at the time that's mm -hmm. where the juice was for, for you know mm -hmm. for and yeah. i know for me but just mm -hmm. agreeing to do something that exploration and that curiousness and creating mm -hmm. and that journey for me is where it's at you know yeah. and yeah, yeah. if you hit mm -hmm. the milestones then you're going to achieve success as well yeah. mm -hmm. you, you avoid yourself you know if you succeed and then that's why you planned avoid great you feel good and then you have the power to go on if you don't award yourself and don't see the results or the achievements, then of course it's not possible on the long term. You're completely right. Yeah. I wanted to mention something here, which I believe is important as well. You know, we talk so much about that long-term aspiration and the dreams. And of course you have to enjoy every single day you have, even though it's hard work, but you know why you are working for that's that long-term aspiration, which we have for manifestation or however we call it. But what's important is as well, you know, if you believe that if you will dream it long enough that it will happen usually that leads in the um, illusion which uh, leads in the uh, frustration that's why working and what you said looking at the achievements and the delivery it's so important you have to see that you've done something so it's not about dreaming your career or dreaming your business only that's why i mentioned the hard work you have to do some work in between really and reflect on it change it if it doesn't work leave it go elsewhere that's all those are such a great stories and we just think that you start somewhere and then you succeed and that's it because everybody else has done it no we all have our individual path and that's the beauty because we are so unique and work on that uniqueness you know often we do compare ourselves too often to others and, and that's the trap i would say absolutely yeah. 
Yeah, that uniqueness is what will save you any day of the week, right? It trumps yeah. everything else because, yeah, when we compare ourselves, there's nothing wrong with that. We all do it. I mean, you can't stop it, right? So embrace it, but just be aware of that. It's that awareness thing again. It's like if you're aware that you are comparing, you can mm -hmm. put the brakes on and go, no, that's not where it's at. What about me? What am I good at? What, what yeah. Because that's the only thing, right, that gets you through. That's what success looks like. All of these mm -hmm. people that you see, what, you know, behind their success story usually is a load of hard work, lots of failure, and embracing their mm -hmm. authentic self, their uniquely creative take on the world and what they can put on the table versus, you know, it, and again, going back to the comparison, there's nothing wrong with copying people. No. I did it as, as a musician because I didn't have the skills <laughs> to, to not do it at the time. But once I, you know, got over that, you get yeah. that. you can't spend your life compar comparing to others anyway. It's just not sustainable. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know, it's good to have a benchmark. Not, yeah. I wouldn't call it a comparison, really a benchmark, something you desire, something, someone you admire, because that's motivational, inspirational. But I would say, you know, you can't be that particular person. It's not possible. And that's the beauty. And if you if we are aware of that, that's that's so powerful because then you just you know we learn of course with mentorship and having uh, our uh, idols or whatever that that's a good thing because then somehow you are setting the target for yourself. But in between, how we model that and uh, what do we become at the end of it? That's our own story. And you said yeah, as you said, it includes everything failures and learnings and successes and uh, parties and <laughs> uh, celebrating everything that we achieved uh, but as well yeah it requires really for us to uh, to create our own path whatever coming back to the career you know it's our decision our way how we would like to do it and the the most powerful thing is because it's our own experience and you can't take an experience, for example, from you or from Mira, if I would take it and I would say, aha, uh -huh, this is what I will achieve because it will make me feel like that. Doesn't work. So it's my experience, how I feel in that particular moment. And then you can build on that. And that's, that's the drive, which we then carry for, uh, for, to de for develop yeah, or to go further or to understand things more positively or negatively, of course. <laughs> yeah the reflection isn't it and seeing yeah. uh, uh, see, seeing what we are capable of we can do and and transferring the knowledge mm -hmm. and we, mm -hmm. the beginning isn't it transferring mm -hmm. the knowledge of of what we already have what we can what we can use to move forward yeah you, you, uh, you, i shared that already with you but now you reminded me on me how important it is to have that role models you know, uh, the comparison benchmark, whatever we call it, especially at the beginning of our life, you know, because every single period in our life uh, offers the opportunity for us to have a mentor, for us to have a role model, somebody whom we are looking at, and really that's the inspiration. And this reminded me on that story as I was at the beginning of my career, how important it was that I was working for a CEO who was such a great guy such a great gentleman and exactly what I needed in that beginning of my career because I knew I have knowledge. I knew I'm capable to do a lot of things, but I was quite not confident in the area of how to lead all those business dinners and all that social business uh, happenings, uh, which are part of the career and part of the business. Let's face it, that's it. And it's part of our uh, professional persona which we developed and I was so scared really. I was scared to go for their dinner, how to behave, what to do, what to eat. And he was really a great mentor at that time. Really, he explained to me at the table, do sit next to me, I'll teach you everything what you need, uh, what you need to know and then you, you will have that self-confidence which you need. And I was like, oh, how will he do it? And it was so practical and so uh, simple that really, he really just shared with every single dish which came on the table. He said, no, now you take that fork and you take that a glass and you order a Campari juice. I didn't know what Campari juice is, by the way, <laughs> at that time. And, you know, he said, you know, that's ladylike. So you do it. And it's also very businesslike. And I was like, thanks God. At the end of the dinner, really, I went out and for the rest of my life, I felt so confident and I felt so relaxed. And it's part of my business persona now. And I'm really thankful for that. 
And going back what we just earlier said, it's so important really to look for those people who might there. They're maybe not so visible at the first sight, but really ask for help or ask them for their advice. And this might help as well. Mm, especially you know, because now we are discussing those senior leaders or developed careers or how to even improve or how to grow further. But there are a lot of people who are at the beginning of their careers and COVID might scare them what will happen to them. Or they might have that um, not realistic view that everything is possible to do or to be achieved in half a year. Yeah, if you believe that, that's great. But just find somebody who can help you with that as well, just to not to um, lose yourself then in the failure, uh, failure mood, let's call it like that. <laughs> hmm. I made you thinking. <laughs> so many thoughts. <laughs> to, to conclude, but it was funny before we record, I was like, let's keep it to a certain time frame. And we never do because the conversations are always amazing, right? <laughs> so yeah, I was just reflecting. I was like, is Mira going to wrap this up or <laughs> I wanted to ask you throughout the conversation, I yeah. wanted to ask you, is there any uh, insights and stories that you wanted to uh, share from your career that could, uh, that could help people, uh, you know, with, their, with where they are at the moment? And then you just shared the story. <laughs> <laughs> No, but have, I have another one, better one. You just yes. reminded me. I never ever shared it actually, uh, because it's it's very personal, and it happened to me in in the phase of transition as I was leaving my corporate career, establishing my business. But it's not exactly that why I did it. Mm -hmm. You know, it's unbelievable. I'm that positive person. Really, I can inspire people to do unbelievable things. <laughs> really, and you know, there is a time that when it really backfired, backfired. And it's amazing why and how it happened. Uh, I had a successful corporate career and I was working on the, uh, I was covering several markets and we had that matrix structure in the organization. And what I recognized after a really, really bad event, which happened to me personally, is that the thing was that the motivation for a person really, be, really being mean towards me, but mean on the personal and professional level. So it was really tough. Uh, I found out that it had to do with my personality because she had a feeling that I'm so positive, even though that I don't have results, even though that I have to struggle, I still come in the office and I say hello to everybody. Good morning. What's up? Let's do that. And it was that, uh, how is it called? It's not, um, maybe a jealousy. How can you manage that? And I recognize, you know, people, if they see something what they would like to have, then they can translate it in a really mean behavior, which can be uh, hurtful, uh, but as well painful for somebody else. But you know, my thinking was then, okay, shall I change myself? Shall I be like more uh, uh, a calm person, somebody who doesn't like talks immediately or shares her opinion because I am like that, you know, I'm not the one who pushes my opinion. I love to discuss things because I'm a true and strong believer in it that exchanging views is a huge learning as well and uh, development. But on the other hand, in that particular moment, even though it was really a bad, bad uh, time for me and I had to go through that uh, self-reflection again and the biggest part of uh, being who I am and staying who I am was that I, have that I had that self-awareness. You know, that's me. If I start changing myself, then I will lose the one unique thing which exists and that's me, my energy, who I am, how I do the things. And if I start to change that, then I'll be nobody. And that was that decision. You know what? I'll stay who I am, but that's not the environment for me. Let's see what's out there for me. If that's not me, is there any other company? Is there my own business? And so I landed actually uh, creating my own entrepreneurial business. Um, but anyway, what I wanted to share, and it, that's really, for me, it was really important that what we are, going back to the uniqueness, we are so unique and let's use that 
in whatever form, helping others, developing ourselves, uh, uh, becoming an entrepreneur or becoming um, having our own podcast, it doesn't matter really. But yeah, awareness is a huge thing, not only having the awareness about ourselves, but as well how this reflects on others and how we manage those relationships. Mm -hmm. so, um, That's so it's not always, but to mention that, because it's not always happy, shiny, funny, and uh, positive. Mm, uh, of course, I have my struggles as well. And uh, mm, coming back to that, really, we have to deal with that. It's part of the life. I am like that. Okay, that happened. So I've cried myself out. That's it. <laughs> Let's do something about it. <laughs> no. I mean, I've, I've, I've heard this and then I've, I've been reminded of this uh, quite a few times in the last few days. Life is a contact sport. It's not always bright and shiny, uh, but, but that's what it is. And there is nothing wrong with that. And, and we can deal with all of that. Yeah. Yeah. And if we can't do it alone, you know, there are books, podcasts, movies, uh, coaches, mentors, where you just have to see the once again the opportunity as well. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, Simona, thank you for being our guest. Oh, you know, I'm really thankful and grateful to, uh, to the two of you. Really, you once again with your questions, you provoked some thoughts which might be sleeping somewhere there. So it's always <laughs> great to have that our conversations. Really, it's not only about the interview. I believe it's as well if we take time that interview it's kind of taking time for myself i understand it like that and then i reflect and i it reminds me of some ideas which i might forget about really to start doing something what i'm missing uh lately and so on so it's a great great uh great opportunity for uh, a person on the other side of the mic to reflect on uh, herself as well so thanks a lot really i enjoyed it a lot <laughs> well, great to hear that <laughs> yeah it's the same for us i mean it, this is why we do what we do right because every time mm -hmm. we have these kind of conversations i'm like wow i didn't see it from that angle and again it's going back to that uniqueness it's because we all have a different take on it and yeah. why would you not share that with the world because it's not for me to know who's going to be impacted by that mm -hmm. i decide to share it because it's uniquely yeah. coming from me why not and that's what i would say to anyone listening to this right mm -hmm. and for people who might be interested in reaching out to you or wants to know more about your work or wants to you know get some traction in the career where would be the best place to reach out to you yeah you can either check my youtube channel with simona spilak so it's very simple or uh, check my Instagram, Facebook, or just send me an email, which is on my website, simonaspilak.com. So I'm uh, available uh, out there. And of course, there is always a chance for a free breakthrough call, which is completely free, 30 minutes discussion with whatever challenge or question you might have. I really love doing it because it really, it, um, uh, it moves people. And that's the beauty of it. So yeah. Social media is the contact touch, touch point, of course. So. Well, thank you very much. It's been a real pleasure. Thank you. Yeah, pleasure is mine as well. So thanks a lot. Have a great day and uh, nice being here.